33. How are the following similar and how do they differ? And then we have letter B. So we have this notation. That's a weird notation. That's called a wave function. So whenever you see this uh, little symbol here in chemistry and in physics, this is represented as a wave function. So basically, we just have to uh, talk about what makes a wave function for an atomic orbital and a wave function for a molecular orbital similar and just represent the difference. So in this case, the similarities between a wave function for an atomic orbital versus a wave function for a molecular orbital is basically what a wave function is. So a wave function is a quantum mechanical model. So that's it's way beyond general chemistry. This would be like physical chemistry if you guys are in your an, in an actual chemistry major, which I was in college. Um, you would take a class called uh, physical chemistry, and that's where you go into quantum mechanics and uh, disc you know actual finding out mathematical constructs for probability of where an electron is. So this is where like Schrodinger's cat comes into play. Um, so, but once again, for general chemistry, this idea is, or finding the actual math is way beyond this course. So we just talk about it in general. So the similarities is what a wave function actually is. A wave function is, we'll say a quantum mechanical model or construct or idea right? It's a quantum mechanical model that, that describes or that addresses, we'll say, that addresses the probability of where an electron is located. So let me just write this out. Okay. So whether you're talking about this model in an atomic orbital, you're still talking about the probability of where an electron is located versus in a molecular orbital where the electron is located. Just to give you an idea, if I had to draw a atomic orbital, you would only be drawing just a S orbital, right? Or a P orbital. S's remember are circular. So this would be your atomic orbital is when you just have your S's just, uh, you know, chilling, I guess, right? So an atomic orbital is basically the setup before your molecular orbital. Your molecular orbital is now describing what's going on when these two try to come together. And if your S orbitals are trying to come together, you could have either a bonding molecular orbital or an antibonding molecular orbital. Um, just know that if it's bonding, they're going to be coming together without any interference. So basically the green will latch up with the blue, and now they're acting as like one big entire species. I'm sorry for my drawing. Technically this is like supposed to be two circles smushed together but that's pretty good, in term of one singular atom. Now just know that for your atomic orbitals, you have one electron in both, but then for your molecular orbital, kind of looks like a cool little uh, medication thing, uh, you'll have the two electrons. So anyway, that's the similarity of where to find or the probability of where that electron is located. I drew the electrons inside of the colorings that I did. But for example, it's all about probability. Would the electrons be over here? Would they be over here? Would they be over here? Would they be outside the drawing? That's what the probability is talking about. But now we just have to talk about it, the difference. The difference is now describing your atomic orbital versus your molecular orbital. So. When you're talking about probability for atomic orbital, atomic orbital versus a molecular orbital, 
The difference is, is talking about the probability of how many electrons. In your atomic orbitals, each atomic orbital only has one electron. So the difference is you're describing the probability for one electron. As opposed to a molecular orbital is when those two atomic orbitals come together, you're describing the probability for the two electrons located in that molecular orbital. And that would be the difference. So that's it, guys. What do you think? I hope this helped. If it did, and if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. Let's keep working hard, keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I will be talking to you in later lessons. All right, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.